Hello everybody, this is Bart from Executive Automates team. Uh, today, on this webinar, we're going to walk you through the test automation on AX2012, uh, considering the upgrade process to finance and operations. This will be a little bit different than we normally do. Uh, we would like to show you some concepts, some info information uh, from our uh, partners and customers, what they actually do um, in their projects and how they are treating this transition from 2012 to FNL. Um, the agenda, we're going to start with uh, what do you need to know regarding the um, test automation, some introduction. Um, I'll try to give you some information. What are the trends regarding the teams? What, what do you need to have for test automation? Um, then we're going to jump in also into the executive automates, into the our um, dev box to show you the test automation in 2012. Then I would like to show you a quick glimpse of utilizing executive automates along with DevOps. And then um, I will show you some byproducts, what else you can get from the test automation. And then we're going to leave some time for you um, to intercharge, to, to exchange some, um, some vision on the test automation. So the test automation in 2012 was something or is something which is normally handled by the business users. And like 80% of conversation we've got with different sizes of organizations, they say, yeah, we test, but normally the business is testing. So uh, due to the fact that this is more like internal release and cumulative updates, this is a very plan or organized structure and somebody uh, is actually making uh, not a small baby steps by upgrading from CU to CU. This is more like a, a mile step where we upgrade from RTM to R3 or R2 to R3 CU13. Um, not so often we see like customers are jumping in um, into the CU whenever it, it comes, uh, especially when Microsoft right now um, doesn't have the, uh, there is no more upgrades planned. The 2012 actually is going to, uh, for retirement, we may say, uh, this is more driven by the internal release. The testing is driven by internal releases. And um, in finance and operations, you are placed in totally different momentum. We can say you have to deal with those updates. You have to be on pace. And they are giving you something you have to apply or they will actually force you to apply the new changes. So you have to be prepared. You have to have the process. In AX2012, if you didn't have that, this is something you need to learn. You need to have um, test scopes. You need to have the actual test cases, what they are, um, what, a, uh, what area they come from, what they cover, what are the, the criteria for success, the negative tests, responsibilities, the RACI matrix. So you need to know who is responsible for data migration delivery, for configuration if something is missing. You need to very wisely plan the entire process from the beginning to the end. Uh, so this entire uh, challenge of upgrading the system, um, keeping up with the one version upgrade, um, it will be something you can handle because it might overwhelm the business users very quickly if they are going to be responsible for testing. Normally, the number of iterations will just burn them out and you're going to have a significant problem. As we actually see right now, the customers are are struggling with uh, with that approach unless they are on-prem, which in some cases is quite impossible. Um, so the side of when you've got the team, when you've got um, the scope, there are some elements you can definitely know. The DevOps will be something which it is good to recognize how we can place our testing process in DevOps. We're going to walk you through this today. An example, as simply as possibility we, we found out. Um, and there are some concepts of golden template. And this is something good to mention. The golden template of the processes, it exists in more uh, or bigger entities, bigger companies, which are having multiple uh, companies across the globe. But there is one, let's say, a mother company, which is a, which is covering or having like 80% of the processes. And those processes, they actually exist in any other company. 
Um, but there are some local differences and also local different entities across the globe. They've got some local processes. So golden template, we can say these are all processes which are shared. They are different just because they get different configuration, finance um, configuration, or some local specific regulatory ones. Mm, but you can make those processes reusable. You record them one, and you maintain one list of gold processes, and you are simply modifying them a bit to make sure that they are complying with uh, local regulations. And those local test suits, which are doing some standard audit files or some specific reporting for uh, governments, these processes, they're going to be a separate template. Uh, this is a nice approach. This is something you can think of when you are defining the scope. Uh, after you define the team and the test management tool, you can think of how you're going to aggregate your plan um, regarding your testing. So let's jump in um, to the executive automats. Of course, um, as mentioned, the special offer and, and actually our approach, we want to be transparent. If you're going to be interested, just let us know. We can start a free trial on the executive automats so you can take a look. Um, how does it work like? How does it look like? And then um, just share the experience with us because this solution is purely driven by community. And for the last seven years, yeah, seven years, we are exploring the test automation in starting in 2009 and 2012. The X2012 actually is uh, one of the uh, biggest milestone for us because we created here massive amount of byproducts like security creation, documentation creation. Uh, we've done processes, uh, projects dedicated only for security. We've done projects dedicated only to performance uh, verification, to scale the infrastructure, to make some key PI points. The same thing we do for finance and operations before go live lately uh, to tell or to help out scale the environment how many AOSs it should have or verify if after go live it, it will simply work well. Um, these elements are possible thanks to that what we've done here on X2012. On the major screen on Executive Automates, um, you see uh, mostly scripts and then uh, all around functionalities. But what is script? Script is simply an end-to-end -end process, something you do for end-to-end day-to-day business. Sales, purchases, uh, master planning, warehouse transactions, production, these elements, uh, what you do for a business can be converted as a script and then scripts are executed on a frequent basis, let's say weekly sprints. Uh, you are just executing this using bot jobs. Uh, these are just queues of the tasks you perform and then you are able to review the results and gain more value from it. Um, this entire application is of course implemented, inserted into Dynamics code. Um, we are using just a few classes of standard and those classes are modifies, modified by uh, inserting ifs. Mm, throughout over 100 installations, we haven't seen situation where it was making some harm. It is just an add-on you can add and simply use two XPOs, some DLLs, and um, simply good to go. About three hour installation, and then uh, the test automation journey starts. Um, let me show you quickly how you record, how you play back, and uh, what are the key features you have to think of regarding the automation. Um, having in mind one major thing, which is called um, reusability. And reusability is an aspect which we are focusing mostly on. Take a look here, category. This is a um, feature which helps me build aggregation regarding the uh, reusability, of course. Um, when I'm recording processes in account receivable, I can place the category called AR, or stands for account receivable. When I'm recording purchases, I can record purchases in account payable or procurement, or I can take a different approach and use procure to pay as a work stream, sales to cash, order to, um, to send, uh, hire to retire, um, all of those approaches 
different in different organizations can be set here as an aggregation. So then when you were recording your test case, you were placing it in exact spot. And then when you would like to mm, run a regression around sales module, because you just modify the posting profile, you are able to easily um, tell, please run everything from that specific module. And then system gives you results um, just as a smoke test to check everything, uh, just to check basics without focusing too much on that area. We just want to find out if it, if it is working. Uh, this will be a significant improvement. This just limits and makes your reaction very precise. Um, if you would like to run everything, that's automation. You don't need anybody. You can just run it. But the time consumption needed for execution everything might take much more than very, being very precise and executing just, just with this one portion exactly what you need that. All right, description of this process. Let it be services. Let's take the main account for our transaction, set up the unit price, and let's post it. Before I'm going to post, I'm going to make here two more things. When you're recording, you've got multiple options like setting up validations so you are able to verify some values because we are focusing not only on um, results or, or let's say stability testing, we are focusing on the results and negative testing. So I can execute later on the same process. It will go step by step. The um, expectation is that everything what we've done will be executed accordingly. And then on step number 18, system will verify subtotal amount auto. This means that I'm expecting to see the same value which we see right now. So next time it's going to be executed, it will be 1234 US dollars. You can verify actually multiple fields. You can set um, this end of the process as a just a long process of verification, uh, 10 or 15 verifications of all key KPIs or key important uh, elements of uh, your particular process. So it goes through, it checks the consistency, and then it gives you a result if it is exactly what you expected. And the negative testing is about failing. I would like to make an invoice for stopped for all customer, which shouldn't be possible. So I can make it if I've got warning message, that's success. I would like to um, send an order to non-existing um, address or customer without address. It should be stopped. So automatically I'm going to have error message. I see error message. System is making a twist and it says it's success. So that's exactly what we expected. Going forward. Close. That's it. We can go with posting. I hope the environment mm, don't have any... Um, restrictions regarding this customer and that specific uh, period. Let's see. So it's posting. But we should have here posted invoice in just a moment and I'll be able to save it, play it back for you and just walk you through multiple options you've got. And once the system is posting, um, I was mentioning that all steps we've done system expects it's going to be executed. Of course, there are some optionality steps, dialog boxes, perfect example. They happen sometimes. Sometimes we don't even know when they happen. So we need to make an exception. We know there might be an um, free text invoice uh, dialog box in that precise position. I can make step optional. I can make a pause on the nice step or I can make delay. So I know that I actually should expect a two minutes delay before I'm going to post because something needs to be processed. Um, so these elements are, are, are highly possible. Okay, mm so we've got the process and there are elements like edit data field customer account. You've got multiple options to reuse to change your process. Your process is a template of your business process. So you should have multiple inputs possible for inserting like different customers, different main accounts, different description. If I'm going to leave this with constant, system repeat, repetitively executes this with the same value. If I'm going to use it variables, 
I can transfer data so I can create customer prior to posting. And then I can simply push it here to step number eight to use I'll just created customer. So end to end transaction. And I was mentioning the gold process, the gold, oh, sorry, the golden template, but there is something called gold process. If you're going to think about your organization and you're going to think of the longest possible business process you can perform on the day to day basis, you can think of pretty long process. And we are thinking about highest, uh, the longest possible. So in some organizations, it will be um, 12 or more processes combined. We have some examples of a script which was having 500 steps, it was taking 12 minutes for execution. In normal day-to-day -day business, the entri entire tra transaction, starting from uh, quote to delivery and collections, was taking about two to three months. And we were able to execute that in 12 minutes. Uh, but it was just, an, of course, end-to-end -end transaction. Everything was um, subsequent. But we were verifying the consistency of the business. If that process was working, the best the longest process, it means that the core business works. We are actually secured and we know that we can actually rely on this business, rely on the application. If the core process failed, do some actions. Red light, somebody needs to verify that and simply come back with solution. Uh, so it will be fixed again. And fixes actually in this application are pretty easy because you can activate the activate steps, you can record steps in the middle, you can copy and paste steps. I was mentioning end-to-end -end transaction. If I'm going to find out here, customer creation, and it's actually new customer creation 504. I can match everything what I've got. I can copy my steps. I can come back to my Fruitex invoicing and simply paste it before my selection. So I'm just making an end-to-end -end transaction. And all of those elements, like names, um, I was mentioning the reusability aspect. And if you're going to record process and play it back with, let's say, name test one, two, three, next time it will fail due to duplicates. Number sequences are the essential functionality to make sure that your business processes are reusable, that they are able to run, to be the test case can be executed hundreds, 1,000 times without manual intervention. And we believe this is the only way how we can receive positive value, but it can have actually the reusability when you are able to run at least 100 times your process. So considering creation, uh, you are adding number sequences, you are using Excel files, Excel file can, can help you out even with um, making your test cases cross entity. And I will, I think I'll be able to show you uh, in just a second an example of the Excel data that we were using for um, just a simple transaction. Test data mm -hmm. 2000. Yeah, this is it. This is an example of a quick row by row. Uh, each row is different entity. So you are applying this Excel into the script. It goes through USMF, DMF, and URT. Um, delivering you one process executed against two entities with different customers, items, main accounts, because different entity has different configuration. Simple as it sounds, but it, massive, it massively have um, impact on the time of the execution and reusability of your test cases. Um, of course, the application has a very long list of functions to make sure that you work well with the testing, but it will be not able to show you every concept today. Um, this concept can be showed over trial or this concept can be uh, or actually always is explained within the uh, training after the installation in your end. Because this has a support team which supports the, the executive automates has a support team which helps you with solving issues with understanding the test automation concept after, um, after you start. And of course, anyway, you can identify some gaps in the application. You would like to include new function. We can de develop this in a community-driven roadmap way. So every idea, even those which are going to come from this webinar, we're going to register and simply convert to the roadmap. Um, 
coming maybe to the conclusion of um, this exercise, um, the, f the functionalities which we are right now running, these are quite basics. Some versionings, um, some easy actions, um, the variables, but these elements can be easily extend as well for developers. So if developer has some ideas uh, or much bigger needs from integration perspective, they can write their own code in the um, edit fields in some actions. So something can be invoked, something can be calculated even more um, technicality in technical way. As you see, I've just created a customer and then system just gonna uh, continue with Fritex invoicing. Very simple process. Um, and that's something which can be done by every uh, everybody who will have basic idea about test automation throughout our training. And there is a recommendation from us to have a user, which is gonna be an executive automate super user who understands, knows everything um regarding the um regarding the automation and this will help you out uh, with easy implementation maintenance uh as low as possible because if you're going to have executive automate super user uh, the person can uh simply tweak those test cases which are delivered from the business we can say executive automates is a, a bridge between IT and uh, the business. So they are um, easily um, transferring data and the business is tweaking it to make sure that it's going to be executed always, whenever it is needed. Um, we've got two dialog boxes. One is here, as mentioned, it, the customer group, and we've got subtotal amount information. Um, execution was interrupted. Uh, system set a verification. I just changed that just to show you um, that um, you are able to verify every possible amount. Here, system checks if it is equal to one. It is not true, so we've got a warning. So we can check the results and system will easily help us understand if the transaction works, that's good, but what about the results? That's actually even more important. Okay, so um, as mentioned, this can be planned, this can be converted to security, because you can actually extract security entry points from the process that we recorded. You can then build roles, duties, and privileges, optimize in case of the licenses, and then um, as a end, the, the, the last important aspect is the performance test. And the performance test can be definitely done. You can run processes in background, um, and we were able to simulate over 750 users working in parallel on this application to see if system is capable of um, running the, the, the company major processes, focus on sales. On, on, this was one of the pharmacy, uh, pharmaceutical company in, in Poland. Okay, if you're going to have some questions regarding this, we can come back uh, to that on a subsequent session. And I'm going to Go back to my power presentation and uh, what I've got here, methodology. This is something important and as well simple. We want to keep things simple in our um, ideology. When you are, um, when you don't have so much idea how to embed executive automates actually testing in your organization, this is a simple, um, simple, process you can apply if you've got DevOps or any other application. This might be applicable. Probably you might have different uh, art artifact structure, but this might be quite easily applicable. So this has uh, triggering. So test cycle trigger, internal release CU or one um, version upgrade. Then we are uh, planning. We've got planning activity, what to test. We've got execution activity. Uh, we've got rework, so plan and act on what happened, mitigate the risk, so approve or fix, and then cycle summary to give the stakeholders idea uh, how the process went. So the first thing um, we've got in here, um, this will be the um, test 
cycle start and the test cycle start we can identify as epic in um, devops see here this is an example test cycle update 44 45 or cu 13 we are identifying what areas might be affected uh, by the change we are defining the team who will be responsible for these areas and um, this is very important because later on when the pace will be higher where temperature will grow we'll need to find answers and we need to find answers quickly so the test manager in that in that option is defined and program manager the the general the, the responsible person for delivery um, which is the program manager needs to start the activity by creating the epic um, so program managers informs the business about the release each business area picks the processes uh, that they feel might be impacted by the new release the business can pick it or um, program manager actually can take this so going on the second uh, phase as you, as you say as you remember this is a planning phase um, either business or uh, program manager will create tasks underneath the epic and these tasks are relocated to uh, later on to the um, to the test manager on the moment of planning they are on the business so if the program manager creates that the program manager allocates to the business so business can uh, tell a bit what needs to be tested and we've got three areas in here purchases sales warehouse uh, from the purchase department so the business decided to take and consider verification of agreements pricing list and master planning for sales we've got customer creation customer collections and warehouse department we've got counting process recalculation inventory adjustment and wave distributions um, so business has sort of uh, let's say six cards or each of them this is we can say area they are handling and they are picking up from their areas what should be tested to be precise to not test too much to limit number of test cases to make sure that the, the delivery and the communication will be quick uh, so less is more we may say to not test too much so after the planning activities we are uh, we've got those three um, three areas three tasks They've got their own statuses. They've got person which are applied to. We are going to execution. And execution means that test manager gathers, gathers all of those cards, tiles, which were uh, defined and into the, into the um, execution to the scheduler. And they are executed. And test manager, the responsibility of that person is to distribute the results underneath the um, underneath the um, specific uh, task so uh, i'm in here acting as test manager my colleague matt was actually the business user for purchase area area and uh, he told me what to test i was able to uh, find it out test it out and then I built. Uh, I was able to build the um, scheduler, have the results, and I'm notifying him. Thirty processes from your area succeeded. Four of them um, focus on master planning. They failed. So please review what is going on, because we need to move forward. And I'm doing the same activity on sales and warehouse. Uh, so we've got full flow, uh, full flow uh, applied. And actually we are considering here two options either our business user will approve the results from each areas because they may say that this comes from the new release or new package that is deployed and the test cases needs to be they need to be modified um, so they uh, they need the business needs to modify the test cases and the test manager will uh, retest that and then we're going to have approve and after the approve of course We've got finish, which means that the all areas after the vacations are set to status done and the testing cycle is also set to done as the epic. This gives me the possibility to overview the results underneath one artifact 
this gives me one dashboard when everything is visible so this the stakeholders they know where we are in other way if from uh, the business verification so all of those bugs which kind of came out um, those bugs in DevOps they are applied not anymore to to the test manager they're applied to the developer slash, con slash consultant so consultant can take this and find solutions and ideas how to fix the issue so business or test manager is in contact developers utilizing the same test case which failed so that's a nice shortcut on the data or information transmission developer consultant they can just run the test case make a modification run the test case succeeded oh still failed do modifications apply and apply and apply repeat finally found it then test manager is informed they can run the entire uh, test plan again and if all elements are applied and the test plan finally is approved then again we've got success and all communications all information which are exchanged uh, changes regarding um, some requirements regarding some developments can be applied underneath as a child element uh, to the epic so this um, trigger this action of update to, for, to update 45 or uh, update to see you is actually underneath one artifact in the system very simple process we would like to highly encourage you to use something like that because this will just make your life easier when it comes to maintenance of your dynamics let me jump back so this is something to wrap up a bit uh, the automation by product as you may mention performance testing from the bottom input an aspect to make sure that you are good enough with the, secu with the uh, efficiency of the hardware stuff security um, everything every process that you recorded can be converted to raw and raw can be con uh, added to the user and we encourage you to have the approach called um, position-based roles so the roles are very well known in, we know what we are applying to the row and we are not using standard which is very broad which gives you too much it keeps your roles in very high level which makes this simply expensive thing process documentation simple as it sounds your processes can be uh, your test cases can be converted to documentation and you can actually reuse them for trainings for rollouts onboarding materials um, this and many many more we are able to show you with executive automates um, this journey uh, we've got is super successful um, we can say the last year 2000, 2021 is uh, a wave we are uh, we just started in 2020 um, when COVID started we just started to expand very quickly over 100 percent uh, new customers each year mm. those last seven years just improved and made our uh, our processes and our team much much bigger mm. i think today having in mind uh, some potential issues which are happening on the R set, especially in the new grid areas, especially uh, regarding the reusability aspect. Uh, we're going to grow even more quickly when it's uh, going to be uh, 2022, when uh, the X-12 instances will come um, to find us in operations. Uh, we hope to meet you, to provide you some knowledge, provide you some expertise, to help you out test the performance of the application as well so um yeah if you're going to have some questions regarding the upgrade process this is something you can also address we are doing some analysis how hard it will be to convert your application to finance and operations uh considering some algorithms we uh we came up with uh, so yeah thank you so much for watching us today uh, hopefully um, see you soon on AXG summits and um, yeah stay tuned have a great day cheers